Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm currently here sitting in my garage uh, where my car usually sits. Um, if you watched my video yesterday, you'll know I've been having some issues getting it into the shop, but as of today, it is gone. Um, it is in the shop. And I'm gonna give you some tips today on how you can also resolve these issues, um, like I've had to do. Um, because this was a little bit, we'll call it, it was tricky as to how I had to do this. Um, and uh, I've got some experience with this stuff. So um, I'm, first off, I'm gonna give you a little quick recap and then um, give you the rundown and hopefully some, uh, uh, some good advice as to how you, know, you can, uh, if you ever have these issues, you know, some options you might have to get some relief. Okay, so real fast, uh, October the 2nd, my oil cooler failed. Um, long story short, it has taken me uh, a little over 60 days um, to get the car into the shop. Um, I haven't been able to drive it this entire time. Uh, and it, in my case, it's not that the dealership was intentionally screwing with me or anything like that. It was um, due to layoffs or manpower issues or whatever's going on there. They've lost 60 to 70% of their service staff um, and well over half of their sales staff. Um, I like to think it's because Dodge doesn't give them anything to sell and therefore no one's making money, no one's got a job. But that's just me being logical. Uh, so who knows what the real reasons are, but the end result is everything runs really slow now. Um, and this is a fairly, you know, it's, it's, this isn't the biggest city in, in all of Florida, but it's not a small town by any means. A few hundred thousand people live here. And it's the only Dodge dealership in town, so it's always backed up and full, and it's a madhouse. Um, but anyway, uh, I had an issue with it on this past uh, Monday when I took it in for my scheduled appointment. Uh, the dealership had an error. Uh, somehow or another, the ball got dropped, and uh, uh, my appointment that I had somehow or another evaporated. Um, the person who tried to find it couldn't find it and said, well, you just got to go and make an appointment online. Well, the problem with that is, is the next available appointment was in March. And I'm like, you yeah, know, um, so I, in, in my personal life, I try not to be an a-hole. Um, but for those who know me, uh, I'm, I'm more or less a professional a-hole. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm a project manager. Uh, I'm a change manager. I work in, you know, uh, a really, 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 really big IT company on the West Coast. Um, and my entire job is dealing with government agencies, uh, private corporate entities, things like that, um, dealing with, you know, uh, big time computer networking installs and, you know, that, that type of stuff, you know, and um, when you're doing like vendor management and they're late and they're always late, by the way, um, are not delivering the stuff they're supposed to deliver. <clears throat> Sometimes my entire job from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed is being a royal a-hole to try and figure out why we're losing hundreds of thousands of dollars a week. And so um, keep in mind, like if I'm pushed in my personal life, <clears throat> I, I can revert to my, my professional a-hole. Um, and so I, I really try not to do that. But they kind of pushed me that way uh, on Monday. And so the result of that is what's gonna be the, the meat of this video, and that is, is how you fix uh, when you get screwed. Um, and that's more or less the gist of it. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm all about, um, I'm going to probably film a video later today um, <clears throat> that introduces me because I'm starting a new channel. I used to have a pretty big channel a while back, um, but I've kind of shifted gears. <clears throat> I don't want to do car reviews and all that kind of crap anymore. Um, so what we're going to, I'm, I'm going to basically fill you in on who the heck I am and why you may or may not care. Or, to listen to the, or watch the channel. Um, but just to give you a very, very quick rundown, um, 
I am uh, a retired Air Force vet. Uh, I worked in the space program for a lot of years. Um, NASA, SpaceX, Westar, um, let's see, who else did I work for? Uh, NOAA, uh, flew weather satellites for a while. Um, but I, I was an operational orbital analyst, that's what I did. And then from there, um, I dove straight on into cars. Well, I've always been into cars since I was like three years old, but um, once I kind of got into the groove with my, my space stuff, um, I just got into building cars on the side. That later turned into a 46,000 square foot shop uh, and built hundreds of cars for lots of people. Uh, I was the shop owner. Um, it was a veteran 501 charity operation. Uh, and I was more or less the business guy. Um, I am, or I take it back. I used to be a certified master mechanic. Um, I haven't kept up with the certification. I, I will freely admit I am not the world's best mechanic. I'm slow and inefficient just because I like doing that work, but I'm not the type of mechanic you want on your payroll because I have fun doing what I'm doing and I should probably, uh, you know, get it done a little faster. But um, there's a lot of people that are more, that are better than I am at mechanic work. And so I'm more of an engineer. Uh, that's what I do in my professional life now. So um, anyhow, but in part of that, um, I got into brokering cars as well. Um, I have a Florida dealer's license um, and I do importing and exporting, um, mostly very specific vehicles. Um, I, I don't try and make a volume of things. It's more, um, I like to help people find old cars, um, you know, that maybe their dad owned 20 years ago, or maybe if someone in Germany wants a Demon 170. I'm the dude who can make that happen. Um, I've got contacts. I don't usually, I mean, specifically, I don't do a lot of that just because there's no money in it for me, um, unless I'm using a, an interim. But um, I'm the type of person who can find stuff and get it to you uh, because I know people. Okay, so, um, and I've also got over 4,000 hours of competition time in three different SCCA classes. I've driven the Pikes Peak Hill Climb nine times. Um, I've built race cars. I used to drive top fuel. Um, I've driven funny cars. I've done pro mods. I've, you know, a lot of drag work, but my real passion is in circuit stuff. Um, I like GT class cars. I like um, uh, vintage B uh, and all, you know, all different kinds of, you know, circuit stuff. That's kind of where my passion is right now. But anyway, um, as such, I kind of know not only how the dealerships work, but I have experience, you know, of course, with the licensing, because I'm a licensed dealer, but also I used to work for the state agency that governs the licensing. Um, I, I was the project manager who built out the Florida Department of Agriculture's website um, that created what I'm getting ready to talk to you guys about, and that is the Lemon Law buyback process. Um, I literally wrote that website back in 2018. And so, as such, I know this process in and out. Now, keep in mind, here in Florida, we have a very specific way things are done, and all of your states are going to be unique as well. But a lot of them operate on a very similar structure. Okay, so what I tell you might not be one-to-one -one compatible with how your state works, but chances are you've got something very, very similar to what I'm getting ready to say. So if you have any questions, um, you can uh, search for your state's laws um, on Lemon Law, and that will hopefully be a little bit more enlightening to you. So just to quickly cap, uh, recap as to what the Florida statutes are. Um, in Florida, we have like a two-pronged process. Uh, first off being like, for example, you, you can, but you can't just straight up file a Lemon Law, say this car is crap, you can't fix it, buy it back. You can try that, but you'll lose in court. Um, the right way to do it is, is the first thing you do is, is you need to file, I guess, an official notice uh, to the dealership that says, this is my problem, please fix it, please and thank you. And with that process, it 
here is, is you reach out to um, the, Flor the Florida Department of Agriculture is the agency that oversees all the licensing for firearms, for car dealerships, for pest control companies, and so on and so on, hospitality and all that type of stuff, um, food service. It's all rolled in under the Florida Department of Ag. And part of that, like I said, is the, the dealer services portion. And so you go on their website, you fill out this little form that says, okay, here's who I am and here's my problem and here's how we're gonna fix it or what I need to be satisfied. And then someone at the Florida Department of Agriculture takes your form and either agrees that it's valid or they say, yeah, no, we need more info or sorry, this just seems like someone being vindictive, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so once you fill out that form, uh, and they accept it, they then will reach out to the dealership on your behalf, all right? So when you file that piece of paper, stop calling the dealership. Don't bug them anymore because the state's gonna get involved now. And they'll reach out and then they're also gonna mail them a letter. Now that letter is kind of your ammo uh, for getting resolution on your problem. Um, it doesn't so much matter what that letter says, it's kind of the, the rule that's stuck to it. Um, and that rule goes along some lines of, you know, upon receipt of this letter, you have X number of business days. And I believe mine was 10 business days. It might've been 15, but I'm pretty sure they had 10 business days to respond. That doesn't mean they have to fix my car in 10 days. It just means they need to respond to the letter. And that's important because this entire process in the state of Florida is open to the public. So this you know, anybody can log on to the Department of Ag website and find my case once it's gone through the system and they post it. Um, you'll be able to see everything that happened, um, what the complaints were and how the dealership responded and what the resolution was, if any. Um, and in my opinion, this is probably the most important step. And that's because for people like me who aren't out ju to just turn screws and, you know, lawyer up and make people jump through hoops, you know, just because I can make them do it. Um, someone like me, I'm trying to get my car fixed. That's it. I don't want to see people fired. I don't want extra money. I don't want pretty much anything, any consideration from anybody other than take my car, fix it, and don't mess it up any more than it already is. All right, and, and give it back to me in good order and we're good and I'm satisfied. Um, so if that happens, then I mark it as satisfied, the state marks it as satisfied, and then that goes in the file. And so when someone else is doing research and they see that this dealership had a complaint, but then it was satisfied, well, to me, that's what you want to see, you know, because... Uh, there's no such thing as a business that does things perfectly every time. It's how they handle complaints and issues that go sideways as to what quality of business that business is, right? Um, anybody can, you know, manage a business that only has fair weather days. You know what I mean? Nothing ever goes wrong. You always get good people. Everyone's smiling. Well, that never happens. <laughs> so you want to deal with businesses who take care of their business, you know what I mean? And so um, that's that that would be a good scenario is everything gets fixed, everything gets filed. Now, this letter is not legally binding, okay? It doesn't mean that if they don't file, then they get sued or they get fined or they can lose their license. It doesn't mean that at all. Um, they have, you know, participating in this is totally optional. I say that with quotes like this, optional, uh, because if they don't participate, there's some serious consequences, um, but they don't have to, you know, no one's going to go to jail over it. Um, but what happens is if they don't respond or they tell, or they do respond and say, yep, nope, uh, this guy's an a-hole, uh, we don't want to deal with him anymore, uh, pound sand. Well, what then happens is, is that becomes your evidence to go to the Lemon Law Board. And again, in Florida, we have a two-pronged process. You've got this part with, you know, the dealer review board or whatever they're called, but then you've got the Florida Lemon Law Board, all right? Well, in order to bring a Lemon Law complaint, you've got to have some type of documentation. You can't just show up there and go, yeah, they're taking forever. I, I want my car bought back. I don't want to pay for this thing anymore. It's not how it works. You need to have some type of documentation. 
Well, if you get something back that says, we're not gonna fix your car. Well, now you have it not only in documentation from the dealer, but it's backed up and certified by the state of Florida. Okay, so now you got a piece of paper to take the Lemon Law board and says, look, I went through the proper process. I've been waiting 90 days. My car is, still doesn't work and I can't get it in. Um, and this is the dealer I bought the car from and they're not honoring their contract. And then here's my letter. Now you have ammo, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, and that's what I did, okay? I filed a letter that very plainly said, this is the stuff that's wrong with the car. This is how long I've been waiting. My resolution is, is I need to get this car fixed. Um, in my opinion, I've been waiting a little over 70 days, but by the time my next appointment that they gave me comes, it'll be over 90 days. And that is well beyond the Florida 60 day lemon law statute. And that's what I put in the letter. I said, I would like to have this car fixed in any way possible because I don't want to lemon law this thing. But um, if any you guys know how expensive a red-eye wide body was in 2023, and I got mine at one and a half percent underneath MSRP. So I didn't know, I'm not one of those people who paid a bazillion dollars for a red-eye, but um, it was still over a hundred grand. Okay, we'll just stop it there. Um, and having a car like that that you can't use for three months, it starts to be like, okay, you know, this is starting to hurt. So anyhow, the car is gone, it's getting fixed. Now, let's say if you, if you weren't lucky and you did have to file a lemon law complaint, again, you get your evidence and then you go to the Florida State's lemon law website and it's very self-explanatory on how to file the claim. But the actual process of dealing with filing the claim is probably gonna require a lawyer, all right? So keep in mind that, you know, a lot of times on the internet, you'll see, oh, like, that thing's a piece of junk, lemon law, and it's easy. Uh, you can do it yourself. No, um, I'm someone who has actually successfully lemon lawed a car relatively recently. I used to have a C8 Corvette um, lemon lawed it, and um, actually that was the most painful, painless process that I've ever dealt with because that car was so bad, GM didn't even fight me for it. Um, long story short, on that one, it went through four transmissions before 6,000 miles. Um, it had a chassis problem that was causing the left axle to sit funny and it was causing advanced wear and it was gumming up the solenoids inside the transmission. No matter, you put a new one in, you, you know, we tried, the car was a 2021, we tried a 2021 transmission and two different 23 transmissions until they finally put in a 2024 transmission and it's still just chewing them up like, like nothing. Um, and given how expensive those transmissions are, Chevy had already paid more in transmissions than the car was worth. So they didn't even fight the, the lemon law at all. And that brings me to my point on that is, is when you file the lemon law claim, you're not dealing with your dealership anymore. You're dealing with the parent manufacturer. Okay. And so in my case now, that would be Dodge. Um, so the way the process works is you, if again, you're successful in filing your lemon law complaint and they take it up, the Lemon Law Board sends an official letter to the manufacturer that says um, the following issues with this vehicle are X, Y, Z. You have 10 business days upon receipt of this letter to provide a response. I take it back. I think it's five business days um, to provide a response to the letter. And then you have like 10, I think, business days or maybe 15, somewhere in there um, as to provide a remedy and or assigned plan okay so in my case let's say i had to go that route and they said they're going to work on they're going to make the fix happen but the part is on back order and it's going to be on back order for at least three more weeks so they'll put in their plan estimated arrival time is such and such day and then the plan goes forward okay and that's what the, that's what that board is looking for um, their other option is a buyback they can literally undo your car deal um, and make it like it never happened. Um, that's refunding your money and all that sort of stuff. Um, now, manufacturers almost never ever go that way, okay? They will fight you tooth and nail, most cases, to, to avoid a buyback. Uh, so don't think for a second that this is gonna be a simple process. And if they can test the buyback, you're gonna need a lawyer. 
that that's the long and short of it. And it's gonna cost you thousands of bucks uh, to successfully prosecute a buyback. Um, now, if you win, you'll get your attorney's fees covered and all that stuff. But, um, you know, in most cases, you as a human being don't want to deal with that because for one, it's not a quick process. Um, the, the average buyback will take you anywhere between six months and 18 months to accomplish. Um, now, if the dealership or the manufacturer doesn't live up to their portion of the bargain, now they're dealing with the state at that point. Um, I'm kind of jumping around and I apologize. But let's say, for example, you're, you reached out to the Lemon Law Board, they sent them a letter, and then the manufacturer comes back and doesn't satisfy whatever those criteria were. Now the Lemon Law Board is the one that will turn around to the manufacturer and say, you are mandated to buy back this vehicle. And that's it. Well, you know, um, and then, of course, they can fight that legally. But for the most part, if it ever goes that far, you're going to get your car bought back, uh, whether the dealership wants to or not. I mean, not the dealership, but the manufacturer wants to or not. Uh, but in my opinion, you want to avoid that at all costs. Um, and the way you do that really is you follow the process, whatever system your state has, and you don't want to go, you know, you don't want to go off the deep end reservation. You know, it's full Karen mode or something like that. Um, it's not a, it's not a good look for anybody to get, you know, angry and all that type of stuff. And you might be justified, but once you start burning bridges, now you're talking about like, you know, there are, there are some scumbag dealerships around there. You cause a problem, they're going to jack up your car. You know, you might not notice, but maybe when they put your intake manifold back on, they put red Loctite on all the screws, you know, and you won't find out about that for years. <laughs> um, you know, I, I may or may not have had some experience with that type of stuff uh, with really difficult people in the past. And so you don't want to mess with mechanics. I'll just say that much. If you think screwing with fast food workers is bad, don't mess with mechanics. Um, but no, really, uh, if you have issues with your dealership, like I said, you have these types of options. Um, of course, you can try you know, a lot of people will try the local route. They'll go to the general manager. They'll start calling managers, you know, and eventually you get something to move. Um, I kind of sort of did that as well. But um, again, I, I know the people at this dealership. I'm not, you know, going to say here that I'm in like in thick with thieves with them or anything like that, but I've been dealing with them a long time. And I know that at this specific dealership, their problem it's more or less a result of the economic situation revolving around Stellantis than it is the dealership itself. So me yelling at the dealership isn't going to do anything, you know, but it doesn't change the fact that my car can't get fixed because they're short 10 techs from what they had this time last year. Um, but regardless, my car needs to be fixed and I've been waiting too damn long. So more or less this letter um, upon receipt of it, um, it sucks for the other people there, I guess, but they skipped me in the line and put me front. Um, and that's how I'm getting my car worked on. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So, um, if you have any issues with dealerships and stuff like that, and you have questions, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, cause again, I've been doing this a good long time. And like I said, if you're interested in knowing who I am, um, and what I'm all about. I'm going to film a video here in a bit and it's going to answer a lot of questions and uh, maybe make stuff more interesting for you. So I'll try to make it fun. All right, bye.